Hello, my friends. I'm Clover, and uh, this is a pretty big day for me because this is the very first time you have ever seen me record a video from my own home. Um, I have been trapped in the home renovation process from hell for the last three years, and today is the first day in the three years that I have had internet access in my house. So here I am recording and posting gas from my actual kitchen. So join me in celebrating that with this puzzle from Philip Newman. So this is called Arrow of Out of Time. It was originally posted in gas on June 17th, 2024, and it is an arrow Sudoku. So in arrow Sudoku, we have standard Sudoku rules, so we're placing the digits one through nine, once each in each row, each column, and each outlined three by three region. And then we also have some arrows in the grid where whatever digit is in the circle equals the sum of the digits on the rest of the arrow. So for instance, these two cells that I have highlighted here have a sum of three. So that has to be one and two because that is the only way to make a sum of three using any Sudoku digits. This eight is also pretty revealing because eight can only be paired with one. Otherwise we would end up with eight plus two or bigger would sum to 10 or bigger, which is no longer a valid Sudoku digit. So that'll be a one, making this a nine. Five can only be summed up using digits that are no greater than four. This can't be one, two, or four because it sees all of those. So that's a three. And then its partner is going to be a two. Four on an arrow is either 1 plus 3 or 2 plus 2. 2 plus 2 is out because there's a 2 that actually sees both of those cells. So this will be 1 plus 3, which will go this way around. Whatever this is, is something that is summed with 6. So the biggest number we could possibly sum with a 6 here would be 3. 6 plus 3 is 9. But we can't use 1, we can't use 3 because those are already in column 4. So this will be 6 plus 2 sums to 8. 2 will always be 1 plus 1. And then here, we have to sum something with four. The biggest number we, we could possibly be allowed to sum with a four would be four plus five, which would make nine. So this would be one, two, three, four, or five. We can rule out one, two, and five right away. So we have either four plus three is seven, or four plus four is eight, which is broken because we have an eight in row two already. So that will be a seven, and then that will be a three. And then this arrow, I know because I've already solved this puzzle, is going to hold out for quite a while. So let's just pencil mark what we can put in here. So the bigger digit here has to be obviously greater than two. So it couldn't be three because there's a three there. Can't be four because there's a four there. It could be five, could be six. Can't be seven because there's a seven here. Can't, it could be eight and it cannot be a nine. So if it was a five, that would be three, which is broken because there's a three in the row. So we can rule out five. So this is either six equals two plus four or eight equals two plus six. And that arrow is going to taunt us for pretty much the rest of the entire solve. So let's enjoy this. <laughs> um, let's do some Sudoku. Let's see how long it takes us to resolve that last arrow. So we have two threes here, and we have a three here, and between those, that rules three out of all these cells. So I'm gonna place a three here. Now I have these two threes that rule three out of all of these cells in region seven, so that's a three. And now if we look at ones in that same region, we have ones that see all of these cells, so that will be a one. And then I'll pencil in the rest of that region with a four, a six, and a seven. This cell cannot be four or six, so that's my seven, and this is a four, six pair. So now these cells will have to contain five, seven, and nine. That can't be a five. Now three and five are here in this row, so three and five can't go in those cells or in these cells because they're already taken. So these guys are three and five. There's a three here, so that's a five, that's a three. That means our last three cells there are four, seven, and nine to fill in this region. And that can't be a seven because there's a seven in the column. Now these are gonna be four, five, and nine. And what next? This can't be a nine. So if we finish up this row, we still need a three and seven among other digits in the row. And three and seven can't be in these cells because they already appear in region three. So this is gonna be three, seven, which will go that way around. And then I'm going to need an eight and a nine to completely finish the row. And then to finish this region, I know I need a five. It can't go in those cells, so it goes there. I also need a two and a six. There's a two in this column, so there's a two, and there is a six. The last two cells here are going to be one and eight, and I have a one there that tells me how to resolve that. These are going to be four, six, and nine. 
Here I need five, six, and nine to finish the column, and that cannot be a nine because there's a nine already in this row. I'm just penciling in the remaining digits there, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These can't be five or seven. So now I have this actual six, eight, nine triple in this region. There are other ways to see that, but that is an option. So that makes this into a five, seven pair. Five rules five out of that cell. So that's our seven, that's our five, and we can resolve the rest of these. The six I just placed gives me a nine here and a five here. This six finally tells us what goes on the bulb of that arrow. And in turn, now that we know this is a six, that's going to be a four, that's going to be a six. The six makes this cell a nine and a six and a nine and an eight. And I need a four and a seven to finish up this column. Here I'm going to need a two, a four, or... Oh geez, not a four and a seven. Um, I need a seven and an eight to finish the column. And here I need a two, a four, and a five. That was a little bit suspicious when I noticed I was gonna have two fours pencil marked in different columns in this region. Now I need a one, a six, and a nine. I can rule one out of these cells, six out of this one. So that's my nine, that's my six, and that is my one. And then that is not going to be a nine. Let's finish this region. So for this row, we still need one and seven. And for this row, we still need two and eight, which will go like that. That'll be a seven, okay, perfect. I still need to place a seven in one of those cells, don't know which, five rules five out of there. So this is the only position for five in this column. And now this is the only position for five in this region. These three cells are going to contain four, eight, and nine. This can't be a nine. And this cannot be an eight. So I've got this four, nine pair that I'm gonna to use to resolve this. Awesome. Now these will have to be four, eight, and nine. This can't be an eight or a nine. So that takes care of all of this stuff. And I do have a four in one of these columns. There's my six, there's my four, and then I need a two and a three here. That goes that way around. And a six and a seven to finish the puzzle. Uh, that's not a quite accurate time. That's the time that I got when I was first testing this. But um, that was a lovely puzzle. It was maybe a little bit trickier in terms of the classic Sudoku scanning required than some gas that we've had recently. I kind of liked, though, that I had to really work with the classic stuff in order to resolve the last little bit of variant logic at the end. I, I always kind of enjoy those moments. So if you want to solve it yourself, the link to do so is in the description below this video. Hope you enjoyed that one, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.